Let us continue with our series where we are dealing with lots and lots of multiple choice questions and the particular topic that we have started with is quantum mechanics. Today, the subtopics that we are going to talk about are wave particle duality, <coughs> matter waves and uncertainty principle. So without wasting any more time, let's start the questions. De Broglie wavelength is associated with a particle in motion only if it is charged, uncharged, both, and other things. Now, remember that matter wave is associated with a moving particle irrespective of it being charged or uncharged. Here you will feel that both option A and B are also correct as well as the C. However, remember in these kind of questions, we are always asked to choose only one question. And hence, we can choose that our option C is the correct answer. And mark the option C as our final answer. Okay? Moving forward, the Broglie wavelength of a body of mass M and kinetic energy E is coming up on the screen are the four different options which are given to us. Now, where do we begin from? Reminding all of you that the de Broglie wavelength of a matter wave is nothing but h by p, where p is the momentum of the moving particle. And when we have known the value of the momentum, we can always calculate the value of the kinetic energy with the formula p squared by twice c. And this brings us to the fact that the value of the momentum is nothing but under root twice m e, where e is the kinetic energy. And thus, we can readily find out the correct option. And obviously, in this case, it is the correct option to be B, H by root over 2Me. Moving on, if Vg be the group velocity of the wave group representing a particle moving with velocity B, then is Vg greater than B or Vg less than B or Vg is equal to V or Vg is equal to V by 2. Now, group velocity of the matter wave representing a moving particle is same as the velocity with which the particle moves. And so, without any doubt, group velocity can always be equated to the particle's own velocity. So, in the given question, the correct answer is the option number C. Let's see what is our next question. An electron accelerated through a potential difference B force is associated with de Broglie wavelength. Once again, we have been given four different choices. When you see the choices, they are all looking a little numeric. So, how do we look upon and how do we start solving this problem? Remember, when an electron is subjected to a potential difference of B force, it gains a potential energy which is nothing but E into V where E is the electron's charge. And this potential energy is converted to its kinetic energy. Hence, P squared by twice which is the kinetic energy is nothing but is nothing but equal to the potential energy gained by this electron when subjected to the potential V. So, P squared by twice is equal to E into V. And see, we have come to the, the fact that this momentum P is nothing but root over twice m e v. So since we know what is the value of m, which is the rest mass of electron, we know the charge of electron, we can readily put those values and calculate the de Broglie wavelength. When we calculate the de Broglie wavelength, we get the correct option. And in this case, the value is exactly 12.27 divided by under root b in Angstroms because we are calculating the wavelength. Now, in this uh, question, I would also like to give you a tip. And what is that? Please remember this particular as a formula. Because you might be asked in other questions to calculate the wavelength and the potential difference value will be given. So, no need to do the entire previous steps as we have done in this problem. You can readily put the value of the voltage in the, in the formula and calculate the wavelength. Okay, so let's move forward. The energy of a neutron in electron holes whose de Broglie wavelength is 1 angstrom is 
Once again, there are four different options. So see here, instead of electron, now our uh, particle is a neutron. And its mass is given by 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. Now I always ask you to remember these kind of constant values. Also, we know that momentum will be etched by lambda. Where lambda is the de Broglie wavelength of the neutron. And its energy would be P squared by twice n. Putting all these values, we will be getting the energy of this neutron. However, this unit will be in joules. So, we have to convert this joule value to electron volts. Once again, reminding all of you, 1 joule is equal to 6.242 into 10 to the power 18 electron volts. Putting this particular value, we can calculate the energy finally in electron volts. And the value comes out to be 8.13 into 10 to the power minus 2 electron volts. And see which one will be our correct answer? Obviously, the option B. Okay. The de Broglie wave representing a moving particle is a monochromatic wave, a wave group of continuously varying wavelengths, a progressive wave, or a stationary wave. We know that matter waves are mathematically equivalent to the result of superposition of many waves of slightly varying wavelengths. And the resultant wave is represented by a wave group. Option A cannot be correct since monochromatic wave means a wave which only has a single wavelength. A wave which travels continuously in a medium in the same direction without the change in its amplitude is called a progressive wave. And since we know that matter wave has a varying amplitude, this option C also cannot be correct. Moving forward, a stationary wave is a wave which oscillates in time but whose peak amplitude profile does not move in space, which means option D also cannot be the correct answer. So the only visible answer is the option B, which means the de Broglie wave representing a moving particle is a wave group of continuously varying wavelengths. Alright? Division and Germer experiment concerns diffraction, polarization, interference, or electron diffraction. Now, Division and Germer experiment was the experimental verification of matter wave and was performed with electrons. The results could only be explained on the basis that electrons were manifesting themselves as waves and underwent diffraction. And so, the answer in this particular problem will be electron diffraction, which is the option D. Let's move forward. The product of uncertainties between position X and momentum P is, as you can see, we are having four different options. Now, Heisenberg discovered that the product of the position and momentum uncertainties of a quantum object, such as the wave packet, is greater than or equal to Planck's constant h. Thus, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, delta x, delta px is always greater than or equal to h bar by 2. If you scan all the given options, you can readily choose the correct one, which is none other than the option c. Okay? The uncertainty principle is a consequence of wave nature of particle, particle nature of wave, wave particle duality, or uncertainty of future. Remember, in my last video on uncertainty principle, I had discussed a fact that we can say that the direct consequence of the wave particle duality is the appearance of uncertainties or spread in the momentum and position of a particle. If one of them becomes definite, the other becomes completely indefinite. So, among all the options given to us in this particular question, we can readily choose our correct answer as the wave particle duality, which means the uncertainty principle is a consequence of wave particle duality. Moving forward, which of the following is incorrect statement of the uncertainty principle? There are four different options which we can see. Here, 
Let's remember that the simultaneous measurement of conjugate variables is linked with the uncertainty principle. Reminding ourselves about conjugate pairs. We have the linear position and linear momentum, energy time, angular position, angular momentum. So options A, B and C in this case are correct statements of uncertainty principle, aren't they? However, linear position and angular position aren't related by a the uncertainty principle. So, in this case, the incorrect statement of the uncertainty principle is the option D. Alright? What voltage must be applied to an electron gun to produce electrons with wavelength 0.4 angstroms? Once again, there are four different options available to us. How do we solve this problem? We have already discussed that when there is an electron subjected to a given potential, its wavelength is given by h divided by root over twice n e v. In this case, the wavelength is provided to us. We know the mass and charge of the electron. So by putting those values in the formula, we first calculate under root v value and then from there we can calculate the particular voltage. And in this case, the Exact value comes out to be 936.3 volts. So, among the options given to us, which is the option C, which is the correct option. Alright? Let's move forward. An electron has a speed of 1 km per second with an error of 0.05%. What will be the uncertainty in its position? Let's see what are the options given to us. As usual, there are four different options. Now see, what are the information that we have? We know that the error in the velocity of the electron is 0.05%. Then, what will be the error in the momentum? The error in the momentum, delta P will be mass into the error in its velocity, delta V. Putting the values, now while we are calculating this particular thing, Remember, the value of velocity given to us is 1 kilometers per second. So, we have to convert this value of 1 kilometer in meters. That is why in the numeral, you can see that there is 1000. And since we are calculating the error in it, we have to now multiply it with its error value given, which is 0.05% or 0.05 by 100. From there, we get the value of the error in momentum as 4.55 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg meters per second. Once we have calculated delta P, now we can calculate the uncertainty in the position delta x by putting in the values. And we get the value of delta x as 1.45 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So when you look into all the options, it is the option A, which is actually the correct option. The lifetime of an excited state of an atom is 10 to the power minus 80 seconds. The minimum uncertainty in determining the energy of this atom is for different options. Now, if you carefully see this question, students, the last question was also related to uncertainty principle, but that was uncertainty principle in terms of position and momentum. And this one is actually a question with energy and time uncertainty. So, we will put in the Known formula of delta E to delta T greater than or equal to H1 by 2. And by putting the value of delta T as 10 to the power minus 8 seconds, we can calculate the value of uncertainty in the energy. And that comes out to be, remember, initially in joules. Then we have to convert that value of joule to electron volts. Using our known formula, 1 joule is equal to 6.242 into 10 to the power 18 electron volts. And the value that we are actually getting upon calculating this is 6.25 into 10 to the power minus 8 electron volts. So, among all the options that we have, option A is the right answer. The ratio of wavelengths of an electron accelerated by 10 to the power 4 volts and a photon having same energy is? Four different options are given to us. Now this particular problem is a lengthy one. Let us break it down into a few parts so that we can easily solve entirely. So what are the steps that we will do? 
First, we will calculate the wavelength of the electron when we know the voltage with which it has been accelerated. That will be our step one. Then we will calculate its energy. Once we know its energy, the same energy will be possessed by the photon. Once we know the energy of the photon, then we can calculate its wavelength. So let us see what we have done. First, we have calculated the wavelength of the electron by the formula H by root over twice NEV. Since all the values are known to us, we see that the wavelength of this electron is 0.122 angstroms. Remember, what is its energy? From where did it get the energy? It got the energy because of the voltage provided. So it is E into V. And the same energy is possessed by the photon. And we know that the energy of a photon is H nu or Hc by lambda. And hence, lambda is nothing but Hc by E. And since we know what is the energy E, we can calculate the value of its wavelength. And when we calculate its value by putting in all the, the values of the constants, we get its wavelength is coming out as 1.23 angstroms. And since we have to find the ratio of these two, we will take the ratio of the electron's wavelength by the photon's wavelength. And we see that the value is very close to 0.01. So, all the options which are provided to us, it is the option C, which is the correct option. Right? So, this particular question was a long one. And if you can solve this problem, actually, you will be able to solve any such problem where you have been given the voltage and you have been asked to calculate the wavelength of the particle. Isn't it? And also, you will be able to find out the wavelength of a photon whose energy is available to you. This brings us actually to the end of this question series. I hope you all are liking this series and will be watching the next videos. So that's all for today. See you very soon in the next video. And before I end, I would like to request all of you to comment and also share this video to your friends whom you think can also get benefited from this particular video. So that's all. Bye-bye. See you all.